The tensions in the West Bank continue to rise. To date, a large number of Palestinians have been killed since Hamas terrorized Israel on October 7th. This is the UN and human rights groups warn that violence there has risen rapidly with Israeli settlers accused of harassing Palestinians with near impunity in an escalating cycle of violence. Inez de la Quatara brings us this report. The occupied West Bank the heart of historic Palestine. And if from, you see from this, this, this one. That's a settlement. One, okay. two, three, all this is. Everywhere. Yes, this is You're all. surrounded. Surrounded, yes, unfortunately. How do the borders get decided? There's a map, uh, and the map shows where, where the border is. Uh, how the map is made, I don't know. Now, with the world's eyes on Gaza, violence against Palestinians here has been surging. <laughs> The West Bank has been under Israeli military occupation since 1967, with varying degrees of Palestinian autonomy. But more and more Israeli communities, known as settlements, are being built here, considered illegal under international law. That's the ABC. <laughs> Following the October 7 terror attacks, the IDF conducting near nightly raids, it says, are meant to take out Hamas militants, while settler attacks on Palestinians are also on the rise. <laughs> the UN says at least 160 Palestinians have been killed in the West Bank since the October 7th attacks, making 2023 the deadliest year in this land since the UN began keeping records in 2005. Among those killed, farmer Bilal Saleh shot while picking olives with his family in their own field. This is uh, the olive picking. It's like a festival for us or carnival. Every year, same time, October, November. It's not something new. We practiced this 100 years before it. His family says this video shows the moment settlers came down from across the opposite hillside, gun in hand. A shot rings out. Bilal found dead moments later. He leaves behind four young children, Mohammed, Malak, Maïs, and Musa. <laughs> Bilal's family says settlers have been emboldened by Israel's far-right government and by the war. They come with the forces and with the weapons and they put their containers and the people, you know, they start to make some protesting. They start uh, shouting and screaming, this is our land, this is our... So the things, it's escalating. So you can see the road here has been blocked. All the entrances to the village have been blocked. So we're going to have to go on foot here. And these kind of roadblocks have been popping up across the West Bank. The U.N. says over 900 Palestinians in the occupied West Bank have been displaced since October 7th. Whole villages forced to leave their homes under the threat of settler intimidation, harassment and violence. Videos released by human rights groups showing these bulldozers used to block roads and destroy olive trees. They closed the entrance and they didn't allow to anybody if you have uh, some pregnant they cannot go to the hospital. If you have some old man, he, he needs to go to hospital. Also, it's not easy. They are saying, go to Egypt, go to Jordan. You're asking me to leave my land. The issue of who these harsh lands belong to has never been more fraught. <laughs> with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu allying with Israel's far right to form a government at last year's election. <laughs> far right Minister of National Security Itamar Ben Gavir, a settler himself, loosening gun regulations for Israelis and announcing plans to purchase 10,000 rifles for civilian security teams in the West Bank, in other words, for settlers. Yani I am not expert in weapons, but there is difference between the small one and the big one. They are distributing the gun machines like you are spreading bread to the people. During a visit to the West Bank Wednesday, Prime Minister Netanyahu saying Israel won't tolerate Jewish extremists taking the law into their own hands, condemning what he said was a small minority who were damaging Israel's reputation on the international stage. We cannot tolerate this, he said. We will act against it in all ways. Secretary of State Antony Blinken raising the issue during his recent visit to Israel. We're all deeply concerned about 
escalating extremist violence against Palestinian civilians in the West Bank. This has been a serious problem that's only worsened since the conflict. I updated ministers today on my discussion with the Israeli government yesterday, where I underscored that incitement and extremist violence must be stopped and perpetrators must be held accountable. We were given rare access to visit the settlement of Batain. What, do you want to come in? Where we meet Daniel Winston, an Israeli-American settler originally from Chicago. This is not just real estate. This land is an expression of the fact that if you believe that God who created the whole universe and created this world and that he wrote the Bible, it, if he says in the Bible, I want the children of Israel to live in the land of Israel. So for me, that's not only an imperative, it's an invitation. You feel, according to the Bible, this is your land. So what's your response when you hear, you know, that under international law, settlements are considered illegal? Uh, well, the Bible trumps international law. Palestinians say this is their land. They've been here for centuries. The Palestinians can say whatever they want, but the fact is there is no such thing as a Palestinian people. But according to 139 of the 193 UN member states, Palestinian territories are a state. However, key nations like the US, the UK and France do not recognize Palestine. That's three of the five permanent member states, leaving the official global acknowledgement of Palestine in limbo. <laughs> Daniel is also part of the settlement's security patrol. I'm sure you've seen the reports, the death toll of Palestinians being killed just this month alone. What do you make of that? I have nothing against the Arabs. I have something against the way they're acting. Um, and therefore, I have to do what I have to do. I have to carry a gun. I have to be alert. I have to, you know, and my, the, the soldiers of Israel have to act, uh, respond accordingly. But Daniel dismisses the notion that settler attacks are on the rise. You see a video, you see a picture of a Jew carrying a gun, you see them shooting, you don't know what came before, you don't know what came after, and I'm not trying to justify it, I'm trying to say, if they, if they broke a law, so let the law get involved. In Bilal's case, an off-duty IDF soldier was arrested and later released by a judge who was satisfied he acted in self-defense. Bilal's family now left to pick up the pieces Four children left to grow up without a father and fearing the worst is still to come. For us as a Palestinian West Bank, as uh, everywhere, we are uh, calling for peace. We are not for fighting and war. We need to have normal life. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.